Hey everybody, welcome back to Race of History. Today we're going to get into Easteries Western Front 1944-45 Part 1. Let's get into it. June 1944. The Allies had been long preparing to launch an invasion of German-held Europe and now all was finally ready. For the invasion they had gathered more than 2 million men. The Germans could only muster a force of less than half the size. The Allies gave the Germans the impression that they were to land on the eastern part of the channel and the Germans deployed their strongest forces there. There's actually an incredibly interesting story behind this. Um, I can't remember what the group is in the British government. It's British whatever the precursor to MI5 is, I guess. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but they have this whole thing the British do about essentially tricking the Germans into believing that the Pas de Calais is, is going to be where the invasion comes. So, it works so well that even once the main invasion force comes at Normandy, the Germans still hold some units back, particularly tank units, because they think that this is just a diversionary force and the main invasion force is coming at the Pas de Calais. It gives the Allies precious time to, to gain a beachhead to work further inland. This lessened the German strength in Normandy, where the Allies actually intended to land. Most of the Allies landed with little difficulty. In the next few days, they completed their second objective by linking up all of their forces in the area. The Germans concentrated most of their reserves to the eastern section to cover the way into central France. The western sector did not get enough reinforcements. The Americans broke the German line and cut off their forces around Cherbourg. The Germans pulled back and attempted to dig in around the town. But the American pursuit did not give them the time to do that and they were forced to surrender, leaving Cherbourg in Allied hands. By that time, the Germans had lost the opportunity to push the Allies into the sea. They had deployed only several hundred thousand soldiers, while the Allies had already landed a million men. During the next month, the Allies launched several offensives. In the eastern sector, the British pushed the Germans back and gained control of Caen and the terrain around it. At the same time, the Americans crossed through difficult terrain and reached ground more favorable for starting a larger offensive. By late July, the Allies had achieved a strong superiority and were ready to launch the breakout. The strong German force in the east kept the Allied attacks at bay, but in the west, the Americans were able to break through the German lines. The German divisions in the north attempted to escape the encirclement, but several of them were destroyed. The Germans now had little strength to stop the Allies and the Americans were soon in the open country. With the front broken and their troops outnumbered, the reasonable decision for the Germans might have been to pull their forces back. However, they chose to counterattack and close the breakout forces supply route. The Allies originally planned to concentrate on capturing the... Again, this is, this is the risk you run if you, if you have your forces get kind of too spread thin, right? But the whole, the whole way that you make an enemy pay for this is you have to have forces strong enough to cut through the line, right? The line's reinforced. It's going to be unless it's a brand new moving front. And so you have to have the strength to break through and cut, cut through the line. The Germans at this point on the Western Front just don't have the strength. Ports in Brittany, but when they realized that the main German force was not going to retreat, they turned their troops east to try to encircle the Germans. The German attempts to cut off the Allied breakout had failed. They were able to contain the Anglo-Canadian attack from the north, but when the Americans approached from the south, the Germans had no choice but to retreat to avoid an encirclement. The withdrawal was delayed up to the last moment and this would cost them dearly in the following weeks. A lot of the German mobile forces were able to escape the encirclement, but most of their infantry divisions were cut off and forced to surrender. Yeah, those mobile forces got the hell out of Dodge. The remaining German troops now attempted to establish a new defensive line on the Seine River. However, the Allies had anticipated that. As they were closing the pocket, they had already sent their troops towards the Seine. It pushed away weak German resistance and established a bridgehead over the river. 
As a result, the Germans were unable to easily access the eastern part of the river. The Allies used this fact and raced east themselves. They established their positions along the eastern Seine before the Germans could dispatch significant forces to counter them. The German garrison in Paris was left isolated and surrendered to the Allies on the 25th of August. The Allies had gained the upper hand in France and they had now established more ambitious objectives. One was to capture the main German industrial area in the Ruhr. Occupying it would severely reduce the German ability to maintain their war effort. The second objective was securing the channel ports in order to improve the Allied supply situation. In their way, there were several man-made and natural obstacles which the Germans could use for defense. The Allies' first move was an attack north into Belgium, which would move them closer to both of their objectives. The main goal of the Germans was to establish a new defensive line in the north and extract their forces intact from southern France. They deployed most of their available reserves to keep open the path of retreat. In the north, the Germans were constructing a new defensive line behind the Seine. They attempted to hold the Seine as long as possible and then pull their troops back to the new line. However, this could not be done. The Germans had not had the time to cover the eastern section of the river. The Allies crossed the river and advanced quickly northwards towards the main German defenses. Then the Allies breached the German line in the center and the Germans had no hope of holding them back. The so the Germans, again, just like on the Eastern Front, once they get put on the back foot, it is just a, a constant, constant barrage and movement backwards for them. And you have a really interesting kind of couple of things colliding here. It talks about how they want to get to the industrial heartland for Germany, but it's not, you know, it's not just that. Um, there are a bunch of things that are going into play here. They want to weaken Germany's ability to resist, right? They have, um, they have seen the way that resistance can work and how devastating, even futile resistance can be when you're trying to invade or destroy uh, a country's ability to wage war, they're not interested in that. So they're trying to do everything they can to cut the legs out from the German nation's ability to hold a war, right? To host a war. Um, they don't want to have to go and, and take all of these places and, and fortifications one by one by one by one by one if they don't have to, right? Um, they, they have the same thought process in Japan, the resistance, they, they feel like it's just not worth it to, to prosecute the war in that way. It's going to waste too many troops' lives. And so if they're able to bomb industrial centers or whatever, whatever they have to do in order to end the war more quickly, that's the route they're going to they're gonna take. So they're looking at options and ways to do that. But also... They have their eye in the east and what's going on there and the Soviets pushback of Germany there. So it's not just the Allies' view of Germany. It's also the Allies' view of the Soviet Union and the progress that they're making on the eastern front. So you have that dynamic playing out. You have Germany doing everything that they can to stop the bleeding, um, making the wrong decisions to stop the bleeding, in my opinion, but trying to stop the bleeding. And, you know, you, there's just so many things happening right now um, and so many different factors at play that it's very interesting to, to get the context for. The Germans began belatedly withdrawing to their main defenses, but by that time the Allies had already advanced beyond them. The Germans retreated in full speed to avoid being trapped, but they were unable to save all of their forces. The Allies linked up and cut off part of their troops. Um, isn't there a German garrison that's, or, or a couple that are holed up in Dunkirk? I want to say that that's one of the like ironic parts of the war is the, the, you know, the Dunkirk evacuation and the Allied troops hold up there at the beginning of the war. And I want to say there were German troops hold up there at the, the end of the war. The Allies continued their advance north and trapped even more Germans near the sea. The remaining Germans continued a fast withdrawal to the east. They were able to successfully reach their new defensive positions on the Siegfried Line before the Allies. 
With Germany itself coming under threat, the Germans would deploy most of their reserve units to the front in the following weeks. The Allies now had to choose whether to concentrate on clearing the ports or the Ruhr. They decided to go for the Ruhr. There were two main obstacles separating the Allies from the Ruhr. The Secret Line and the Rhine River. The Allies decided to cross them by moving north in a single operation called Market Garden. In this way, they would not have to deal with the secret line and they would be able to cross the Rhine River with a surprise airborne assault. The paratroopers would capture the two bridges over the Rhine River at Arnhem and Nijmegen. Then with the aid of other airborne drops, the ground forces would quickly link up with them and cross the Rhine in strength. The paratroopers landed, but they were unable to capture either of the bridges. With the help of the ground forces, the Allies were able to take the bridge at Nijmegen, but by that time the Germans had fully secured Arnhem. The path over the Rhine was closed and the Allies were only able to rescue the surviving paratroopers. During the following weeks, the German reserves reached the front. The Allies needed much more strength to breach the German defences. In order to build it up, it was necessary to recover the channel ports and improve the supply situation. The Allies were able to capture the port of Antwerp with its docking facilities intact. However, they had then concentrated on Market Garden and had not cleared out the approaches to Antwerp, which prevented its use. The Allies first captured Boulogne and Calais, but their facilities turned out to be so damaged by the Germans that they needed to open Antwerp. By that time, the Germans had heavily fortified the Antwerp approaches. The Allies now had to launch a difficult assault and it took them more than a month to dislodge the German defenders. Clearing the water of mines took several more weeks and only by late November the Allies had fully restored their supply flow. During that time, their other forces were fighting on the German border. In September, the Allies attempted to breach the German defenses in three locations, with the Operation Market Garden and with the attacks in the north and south of the Ardennes. In the north, they had to cross the secret line. The Allies made progress through the first line of defense but the arrival of German emergency reinforcements halted them on the second line. After waiting to replenish their supplies, the Allies cut off Aachen from the German lines and captured the town. They then began building up supplies for another attack. In the south, the events played out somewhat differently. The Germans had deployed their early reinforcements to this sector and set up their defenses on the Moselle River in France. The Allies reached the area in early September and when they had arrived in force, they broke into the German line and captured the town of Nancy. Then the Allies had to stop the offensive for two months to improve their supply situation. The Allied forces in the southernmost part of the front reached the area from southern France. After the Allies had broken out of Normandy, their forces landed in the south on the 15th of August. By that time, the Germans in the south had already sent a lot of their forces to Normandy and didn't have the strength to resist the Allies they began to retreat north to the German border. The Americans began to pursue the retreating Germans. They moved north and attempted to cut the German path of retreat, but their forces were too weak to do that and they were only able to inflict some casualties. The French forces arrived on the shore and moved to secure the major harbors. The morale of the German garrisons was low and they fell after only brief resistance. The French prepared to join the pursuit on the American western flank. The American God, you know that this was, this like felt so good for the French to, to get back in and fight on, on French soil. American forces were continuing the pursuit, but the Germans used their tank division to blunt their advances and were able to continue the retreat. Soon, the Germans made a stand to allow the German forces retreating from southwestern France to catch up. They were able to hold the line for some time, but then were compelled to continue the retreat. At that time, the Allied forces coming from southern France linked up with those coming from Normandy. The Germans finished their retreat. During the pursuit, they had lost around half of their troops, but they had brought out enough soldiers to man their section of the main German defensive line. By early November of 1944, the Allies were about to launch a major offensive into Germany along the whole front. The end of the war had never seemed so close, but what they did not know was that Germany had used the pause in fighting to prepare its own offensive. They planned to launch a surprise attack in the near future and knock the Allies out of the war. How the events will play out, we'll see in the next episode. Yeah, so again, I talked about how I personally feel like the Germans did not make the correct decisions in trying to stop the bleeding. 
the Battle of the Bulge is one of those that I feel like was a wrong choice. You're getting your teeth kicked in on the east. You're getting your teeth kicked in on the west. You have very finite resources, you know, pushing the, the allies back into the sea is just not realistic at this point. You're just trying to hold out and, and hope for a shift in, in something, but using all of your resources left is just not the move to me. But with that being said, that was Eastry's World War II Western Front 1944-45 Part 1. Like, comment, subscribe. Help me keep building the channel over here, and I will see you guys next time.